Richard Granger, the son of a Newcastle quayside porter, was a builder's apprentice at the age of 12, and by his mid-30s, a property developer with designs on his hometown. In 1834, he wrote, It is obvious that if the wide and handsome streets I propose are not carried through, a swarm of narrow streets, shabby houses and manufactories will soon cover the ground. I envisage places of business, shops below and dwelling houses or warehouses above. It took only five years to build one and a quarter miles of neoclassical streets and create what Nicholas Pevsner has called the best designed Victorian town in England. His vision was realized thanks to a partnership with architect John Dobson and town clerk John Clayton and made possible by the alliance of public and private capital. Remarkably, around 500 of the buildings still stand within the conservation area known as Granger Town. Half are listed, 20% of them Grade 1 compared with 2.5% nationally. But half are at risk. At the heart of a region of over 3 million people, 1.5 million square feet are empty in a city rapidly emerging as a major European regional capital. It is Granger Town that has the potential to confirm that city's status. Yet, Granger Town's strength, its architectural wealth, has also imposed limitations in terms of access, parking, and conversion to modern retail, residential, and office space. Much business has migrated to the north, south, east, and west, to purpose-built and often grant-aided accommodation. To compete, Granger Town is working hard to adapt in transforming the worst of what is left and building on the best. The big market's nightlife has earned the town a top 10 spot in an American rating of the world's party cities. Stowell Street has become the artery of Britain's fifth largest Chinatown. Newcastle's cultural life is booming, varied and vigorous, and mostly in Granger Town. And there has always been Grey Street. The strong points of Grey Street are undoubtedly its architectural quality, the quality of its facade, the scale of the building, and it is a centre of both social and commercial activity. The future for Grey Street is assured, I believe. It has the quality of environment which occupiers like. Regeneration goes beyond Grey Street. There are already more than 800 businesses and 8,000 jobs in the conservation area. The Granger Town project is encouraging new ventures with an annual £500,000 from English Heritage and the City Council. When I first acquired these premises in 1993, they were in a deplorable state and had been neglected over a long period of time. I was very lucky to have the assistance of English Heritage in restoring them and it has encouraged me in such a way that I've acquired another building and hope to repeat this success with another venture. To unlock the development potential of larger properties, English Partnerships is setting an example by investing in grand structures such as St Nicholas Building and the Wenger's Building. This in turn has encouraged far-sighted private commitments. The, the post office building is one of the finest buildings in the uh, Granger Town area of Newcastle. Here we'll have a building which is, uh, will have in it something like ten uses, ranging from residential to prestige offices, a design headquarters for our international operation, an art gallery, artists in residence studios, car parking health club, and a very unique roof garden over a quarter of an acre in size. Over 8,000 people work in Granger Town, but fewer than 1,000 live here so far. Creating more homes will lead to demand for new shops and cafes and bring back a buzz that lasts beyond 5.30. Home Housing Association has been working in the city centre for a number of years. We already own and manage around 150 houses and flats in the city centre. We're keen to continue that work in Granger Town and one of the schemes in which we are involved is the conversion of Galen House, which you can see behind us. Uh, before I lived here, this building was half derelict. 
Uh, living in the city centre, it's, it's wonderful. Everything's so handy. All the pubs, restaurants, shops, I just nip out the door and everything's there. It's a very small community here in this city centre, but as more and more people come in, it's developing and in the future it's going to be great. There's going to be a real good community atmosphere around here. The foyer, to be built in the theatre village area with English Partnerships Investment, will be home for people training for or just starting employment. It also shows there's a place in Granger Town for good new design. New businesses, new jobs, new homes, new culture. The seeds of new life are firmly planted in Granger Town. But there's still more to be done. This is Clayton Street, which neatly illustrates some of the problems. There has been some development which is grant aided, the odd cafe and some housing up above. But there's much more needed in this area. This street alone has over half the buildings at risk. And we have to encourage the commercial sector to come back here. It was vision and partnership in the 19th century that first brought Richard Granger's town into being. On the eve of his 200th anniversary, a firmly established partnership is poised to turn a fresh vision for the 21st century into reality. This time, the alliance includes the city council, English partnerships, the housing associations and English heritage, a team which has been working and succeeding together for many years. Their vision, embodied in a strategy prepared by independent consultants EDOR, focuses on Granger Town's strongest elements, retail, commercial, residential and leisure, to extend the existing leisure axis and create one between the millennium-funded Centre for Life and Stowell Street, to foster more living communities in the southwest area, to attract shoppers down through Granger Market, to encourage new office uses outwards from Grey Street and to open up key routes between points of arrival and landmarks such as the station and Earl Grey's monument. The improvement will be visible throughout the public realm as well as in individual buildings. For example, at the edge of the city centre a new focus will be created for mixed use, shopping, leisure and car parking and the big market will be opened up for pedestrians to provide Granger Town with a high-quality meeting place. Technically, these are examples of conservation-based regeneration. But this initiative is not just about saving buildings and streets. It's about developing enterprise, improving training and employment opportunities, giving people homes, enhancing the environment, and promoting time for design principles. The project fits English Partnership's priorities perfectly as it builds on public investment which has already been made in the area while promoting new forms of partnership, including the voluntary sector. It's a chance to stimulate new economic activity and lever in significant levels of private sector investment in an area of national and European significance. What we're trying to do here is to bring new life back to the city centre. Uh, to make it not just a focus for social activity, which so many people associate with the centre of Newcastle, but to bring economic life back to the city, not just the city, but the region as a whole. The Granger Town project is about conserving an historic townscape of national and indeed European significance. But it's more than that. It's about fortifying the living heart of a living city with leisure, housing, training, commerce, tourism, bringing jobs and life into the area. Clearly the public sector and the local authority, English partnerships, English heritage need to provide the kickstart to attract in the private investment without which the project has no ultimate hope of success. Richard Granger had the vision, the partnership and the finance to transform central Newcastle. Today, all the same elements are coming together again. A proven partnership has emerged with a strategy and a vision. All that is needed now is the catalyst, the investment that will transform the heart of the city once more. As in Granger's day, people will be drawn here to visit, to work, to do business, to relax, to live. That's what the power of working together can do.